Hello everybody and welcome. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create a star trail image. I'm gonna show you how to take it in the field on your camera. Then I'm also gonna do a little bit of editing. I'm gonna show you guys how to put it together as well because there is a bit of a process. If you're new here, my name's Austin James Jackson. I'm a professional landscape photographer. I'm stoked that you guys are here. Today, the scenery uh, is set here in Wyoming's beautiful Wind River Range. I'm on a little backpacking trip. Um, I'm about six days deep right now and I have this beautiful composition that is facing to the north, which gives me the perfect opportunity to shoot a star trail because you need to be facing the north. More on that later. Anyways, I thought this would be a perfect time to make this video. I really hope that it's going to help you guys out. So let's cover everything in the field first, then we'll go ahead and jump over to the editing aspect of it, which is of course a big aspect as well. So first things first, in the field, you need to be facing the right direction for a uh, to capture a star trail. Um, and of course you can capture a star trail in any direction. I'm gonna show you guys how to capture, in my opinion, the best, which is when you're facing the north and you get the full circle. If you can capture it any other direction, you'll still get star trails, but rather than getting a circle, you're gonna get little streaks um, because essentially everything is rotating around one star or appears to be rotating around one star. So what you need to do in the northern hemisphere, most I assume most of you guys are watching in the northern hemisphere, most of my viewers are, is you need to find what's called Polaris or the North Star. There's a few different ways you can do this. Probably the easiest way is to find the Big Dipper um, and then look up from the end of the Big Dipper, you'll see the handle of the Little Dipper, that is the North Star. Now, if you're having a hard time finding it, there's a lot of apps you can use to help you find it. Um, the app that I personally use is called Sky Guide, it's not sponsored at all, it's just what I use. Uh, it's nice because I can type in Polaris the star and then maybe you can see it on my phone there's a little arrow there it is so looking through the phone's camera you can see that Polaris is right up here behind my head somewhere now the accuracy of this is only as good as the compass on your phone so it's not perfect but it gives you a rough idea of where you should be looking I also like to shoot really wide uh, today I'm going to be using a 14 millimeter and that's going to allow me to capture the most amount of sky and foreground as possible I've got this really nice big scene um, and additionally if the North Star is a little bit left a little bit right a little bit above or a little bit below where I think it's going to be I can still capture the center of the North Star which is really important um, in a star trail photo in my opinion if you want to get that full circle now when it comes to the equipment that you'll need to do this you don't need anything fancy really about just about any camera with just about any lens is going to work just fine the wider the lens the better and the better the camera performs in low light the better as well um, and you will need a tripod that is probably the most important thing you need a tripod that's going to help you to make sure those images are exactly the same every time and we're going to be shooting long exposures so you can't do that handheld anyways so get yourself a sturdy tripod um, if you can and my recommendation is to always keep it low. Like right now I'm using a tripod that is about eye level when I'm standing up. I actually have it lowered quite a bit for this star trail because that increases the stability by making it lower, making it a little wider. Um, and that's really important. You wanna make sure your shots stay exactly the same. So enough talk about that. Let's go ahead and start talking about some of the settings and how to dial in your camera to capture those images in the field. So this video is gonna assume that you already know how to dial in your focus at nighttime. If not, I'll link another video here that you guys can watch. Now to set our settings up, first thing we wanna do is open up this shutter speed all the way to 30 seconds. Then you wanna open that aperture. I usually like somewhere around F4 is usually good and open up that ISO to somewhere around 6400. Of course, you'll wanna take a test shot. You can see I'm not gonna take a test shot right now because it's still light outside. Um, I'm filming this in the light so that you can see what I'm doing, but once it gets dark, I would take a test shot, of course. Uh, make sure the brightness looks about right. If not, you can open up the aperture more or um, you can increase the ISO, or if it's too bright, you can uh, drop either one of those. Generally, I would probably recommend dropping the ISO. F4 seems Seems to be a good place to be. Now you're gonna need to take a ton of these images. I usually recommend doing at least two to three hours worth of shots. So for that reason, you'll need to open up an interval mode in your camera. A lot of cameras have an interval mode. If not, you need to use an intervalometer, which is just a shutter release. Uh, if you are doing that, make sure you go to single shooting. It'll fire once every time that the remote tells you to fire. Now my camera has a built-in intervalometer, which is really nice, so I can just set it to take somewhere like 
300 shots or so. Um, it's really important whether you're using an intervalometer in camera or whether you're using a remote in person that you make sure that you set your time between shots, which is called the interval. You're going to set that to 31 seconds. Um, that is going to mean that every single time an image finishes, another one will fire within one second. It's really important because you don't want any gap or else you'll have uh, little gaps in between your stars. So make sure that you essentially have the camera so that it's firing nonstop. Then go ahead and start shooting. Now I would recommend at least hanging around your camera for a few minutes. Make sure the first few shots go off just fine. Again, make sure you're in manual focus. You don't want it auto focusing every single time. Um, so hang around, make sure your camera is doing all right. Um, and then after a few shots, if you want to go to bed or um, go up somewhere else and hang out and come back and get your camera later, you totally can, but definitely do that. So that covers the portion on how to shoot it in the field. Um, I'm going to bring all of these images now that I've taken um, and I'm going to show you guys how to merge them together in Photoshop because if you look at your images, it's not the star trail that you were promised when you started this video. You need a little bit of Photoshop to help you out. I'm going to show you guys that portion next. All right, so once you get back home, bring your images into whatever photo editor you use for organization. I use Lightroom Classic here. You can see I've got all of my photos right here that we are going to be using. So I've got like somewhere around 300 and something in here. Actually, maybe I have 400 something. I have more than I thought, but they're all uploaded in here. Now, the first thing that you want to do is match the uh, white balance of the photos. So if you shoot an auto white balance uh, like I do, you may want to change this. Of course, you, I could have done this in the field, but it was something I didn't think about. Um, so I want to change it now. So click on the first image, go to develop and adjust the temperature and the tint. Um, this one was shot at, I think, 4500 plus 32. I just want to change those values. I just want to drop them just a little bit. So because when you change it, then I can copy and paste the settings if I don't change it. Um, then it's not going to copy any settings. So I just slightly changed it from 45 to 4400 and then from 32 to 31. Other thing I like to do is scroll down to the bottom here, go to the lens corrections, check these two boxes, make sure it selects your lens in here. Then you are good to go. I'm going to hit Command C on a Mac. That's Control C on a PC. Um, you can check the boxes. Essentially, you just want to make sure that the white balance is checked as well as over here in the lens corrections. You want to make sure both of those are checked. You can hit copy. Go back to the grid view here, then select the second image, scroll all the way down to the very first image, just all the way down here. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to click. That's going to select all of these images. Then we'll go up to photo. We're going to scroll down to develop settings and we're going to hit paste settings. That'll paste those edits onto every single one of the photos that you should notice it'll do that once this little um, adjustment thing, little box, I don't even know what you want to call this, but this thing that my mouse is hovering over, that should appear on all of the photos. Now you've got all of them. Now, if you've got a really fast computer, you can try loading all the images at once. But for most of you guys, if you're not using the most cutting edge technology computer, um, you're not going to be able to load all the images at one time. Um, and for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to load all the images because it'll just take a long time. It'll make things run a lot slower. So what I would recommend doing if you aren't on the most fast computer is just opening a few at a time. So maybe I'm going to go down a few rows and we'll open up maybe this many at a time. I'm going to hold shift and click on the last one. So I'm opening all the way from this image here that's on 19 to 99. So I'm opening about 80 images. You will right click uh, or control click on a Mac. You'll go to edit in. You will open as layers in Photoshop. Once you click that, it's going to take a few minutes to load. I've already got it loaded in into Photoshop here for us. Um, once it loads out, it should look something like this where you've got all of your images here. Now, uh, what you want to do is go ahead and select the top image. Scroll all the way down to the bottom in the layers panel here. You're going to hold shift. You're going to click on the last image. Now it should select, or the second to last image rather. Don't click on the very bottom image. So essentially you want to select all of the layers except for one. Go up here. These are called blend modes. You're going to change it to lighten. Now you can see there it is, the star trail. Now this is only a little trail compared to um, all of my images once I combine them. But like I said, it's not going to run very quickly if I try and load all 400 and some images in here. So what I'd recommend doing is loading, you know, 50 to 100 at a time, saving this file, and then at the end, opening the four or five files and doing the same exact thing as you just did here. 
You can see that I did miss the center of the swirl. It was a little bit up here, a little higher than I expected. Oh, well, you live and you learn. Um, don't make the same mistake as me. Shoot it a little wider. I was shooting as wide as I could to get this lake in the bottom. Um, but that shows you how you can combine those. One other thing that I have noticed, if you're using a camera with a lot more noise um, and you are noticing once you zoom in that you're creating a lot of noise down here. Let me put these all in a folder. You can see how much noise I'm adding because I'm using that light and blend mode. So if that is the case, what I would recommend doing here is uh, putting these all in a group. So all those images that you had selected, click the group button. It'll put them into a group put a layer mask onto the group, and then you can just go in with your brush uh, brush tool. Make sure it's on black here. You can switch it if it's not. Opacity at 100, you can use feather at zero. Just come in here and paint all of this stuff out. Essentially what this is gonna do is it's going to make it so that just the bottom layer shows through on the bottom, which is good because then we're not introducing all that extra noise in here. So you can go in here and be really accurate with this if you want for the sake of what I'm doing, uh, that is gonna be sufficient. Now you can see when I toggle this, it just affects the sky. Again, do that multiple times, combine all your images together and you will have that full star trail. Once you're done with that, edit this as you would edit any other regular photo. You can save it back to Lightroom. Um, you can edit it in Photoshop. You can edit it somewhere else, wherever you want to do it. Uh, but that is how you merge the photos together to create a star trail. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining me. Really hope that was helpful for you guys in learning how to create a star trail image. I think they're a really, really fun way to capture the night sky, especially when you're out there and maybe you don't have a composition that faces to the south for Milky Way. It's a great way to still capture some really great and intriguing images. If it was helpful for you, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I want to help you guys get better at photography. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll help me to continue to grow and be able to provide you these free videos. If you guys have any questions, comments, anything like that, let me know down below in the comments. I try and get back to everybody that comments. Um, and as always, thank you so much for being here. We'll see you guys next time. This is Austin James Jackson. Adios.